Hello guys, welcome to the channel. Today we're gonna be working on building a motor. All right, so this motor, it's from a 22 RXT triple block that I did a video on. You guys gotta go back on the channel and check that video out. It blew up. The rod bolts in one of the rods came apart. They failed. And the rod destroyed the motor, grenade the motor. So we had to get a, another block, another crank and another column balancer because the column balancer got damaged on the middle. I was not gonna take my chances with that. But everything else is, is the same. I did how to get a, another rod. We got white cycle pistons. And if this motor is gonna be stock compression, eight, eight, eight and a half to one, and stock bore. We also putting um, all the ARP bolt. We definitely putting ARP uh, rod bolts and main studs and head studs. Now, this motor was sleeved. It was sleeved by the machine shop that I use. What's good about it is that if something happens later, right now it's standard board. Something happens later, you can always go 10 over, 20, 30, even 40 over. That is good in my book. So you only have to pay for the sleeving once. And then after that, something happens, of course, you can go bigger. All you have to do is just buy pistons. Here we go. Let's get this body started. So the first thing I do is I put this guy in. You don't want to forget that one. Hmm. Put that one in. Then we turn the motor around. First thing I always do is put the oil squirrels back on. So we're going to do that now. And then we move on to the next step. We got our uh, squirrels back in and something very important about these guys. They break really easy. Here's two. This one here, if you guys can see, the little hole is round and this one here is egg shape. This one is stretched out. This ball is trash. You can reuse this one if you can buy a new i would if they look like they're not egg shape eh, you can reuse them but be careful because a lot of people over tighten this bolt it only supposed to go about 15 pounds foot pounds of torque so any more than that you're going to stretch them and they do break and then you have a problem as far as the piston go this is stock compression white cycle piston comes with a coating on the side the rings I already cut the rings for this motor so this is number one and i kind of you know just my ocd um for each hole i number them um this one is number one and of course there's number two and there's uh, number three so i'm gonna put these guys together with the rods and then we are gonna install them on the block all right so i just put the little clips the new wrist pin on the rod. I use Lucas assembly lube inside. I use it in here, in the rod, and in the other side. You can never use enough lubricant assembly lube for these engines. Use it. It's there, it will save your motor. Just on the dry start later. Use the right stuff and you wouldn't have any problems. Now, once you got the piston in the rod, then now I put the rings in. Now that's the way I do it. I think it's a lot easier. And then I put all the rings where they're supposed to go and it's ready to install. So, I hope you guys learn little bit from all these videos all right so the rings are in 
everybody got a different way of putting the reins in. The way I was taught to put the reins in by an engine builder, a race car engine builder. And that's the way I always done it. There's different people that do it in different ways. Everybody says that it doesn't matter because they're gonna move anyway. But the way it is, is the center, the oil rail, when you look at the, when you look at the piston like this, let's put it, let's put it in here like that. This is exhaust, this is intake. The oil rail, the gap goes right here. And then you have two rings for the oil uh, ring uh, rings. So you put one here and put the other one here. And then the bottom compression ring, the gap, you put it on this side where the exhaust is. The intake, the tap ring, you put it where the intake is. Now, that's the way I was taught to be. That's the way I do all my engines and they don't have any issues. Do your research, do it how you think it should be done and that's the way I do it. When I do it my way, hey, good for you. All right, guys, so we got the pistons. I already put the pistons on the wrap, the brand new white Seiko pistons, got all the rings on them, and they are ready to be installed. Let's put them in. All right, guys, so pistons are in. Man, this little thing makes a world of a difference by white Seiko, just is to install the pistons, and they have for each bore, there's a different size, so you don't have to deal, it's really easy. Just put the piston in and it slides right in. This is a good tool to have. Anyway, we got we got the pistons in now. We turn it around and we are gonna put in all the new bearings on, put the crank in. Another little tip that I can give you guys is a lot of people make this mistake. It's the caps. Right now they're on here, they're all here, but a lot of people made the mistake that they put it on the wrong side and then it's really, really hard to tell. Then you spin a bearing. You spawn a bearing, you blew up your engine, and it's a mistake that I've seen that a lot when I see other people building c motors and when I get it that it's blown up, I, I, always, I always like to find out what happened. And it's been a couple of them that they put the caps on you know, the wrong side. So, one tip that I can give you guys that I do is this one didn't have it, so I have a marker that is actually paint, so I painted it, and I put them all facing one side. I like to face it this way, which this is the exhaust side. So I just like to face them all in one way, and then you know, if you have different, like, different colors, even helps even tremendously. This is like a light blue. This is a white that I just I just painted this one because it was really faded away. And this is like a washed down white. So I know all three of them are different colors and they're all facing this way. So now when I take them off, I know which one is which one. You don't want to make that mistake. Hmm. You don't want to be that guy. Hmm. All right guys, so we are ready for the crank. Got my timing change uh, guide in. Got Lucas everywhere. I'm gonna put in the crank and then the counterbalancer and do all the caps for the rods and torque them. So that's the plan. All right guys, so caps are in, torqued, ready to go. Cut my counterbalancer. balancer. Got the timing right. I just need to lock it, lock the cam right here. And that's about it. I'm not gonna lock it now. I'm gonna lock it later. And uh, got a brand new timing chain. I think that's pretty much it. Put together the bottom case, put it in, and torque it. That should be it. All right, guys. So it's pretty much done. Got the ARP studs in. Got the plugs in. Everything is ready. Next thing is gonna be putting everything here in the front, all the lightweight stuff. All right. So finally, got to lock it because I put the lightweight flywheel, lightweight magneto on, and you know, for me to able to be torquing the bolts, the flywheel bolts, this needs to be locked. Of course. Hmm. Got them torqued down. Everything is in here. Now, one little tip that I have to tell you guys, because I done this, and it's 
I put all this stuff and then I forget this guy. Uh oh, now you got a problem. And you would think that it fits through here and it gives you hope because it almost fits, but it doesn't. So you have to <laughs> take this whole thing apart again so you can put this little guy in. Just remember to what I do is I put this little guy in here, in, inside of one of these when it's on the table so I don't forget. That's a little tip so you guys don't waste your time. So here we go. Now we are going to put the head. And the reason why I do that is in case this little guy here falls down. Then if your PT cover is on and you finish here, then you have a problem. Then you gotta take it all apart. So I leave, that's as far as I go with, with this part. That's as far as I go, so now I do the top end. I'll put the head on, put, put the cam, put it on timing, put everything else. And then the last thing I do is I put the PTO cover. Oh yeah, baby. This is getting shaped now. Starting to look like a motor. Hmm. All right, guys. So here we go on my third day trying to build this motor because I got so much work answering the emails and the phone and ah. Oh. So my shop time has been reduced a lot since my online business and my YouTube and everything is just growing. So uh, I have to have patience. So here we go, third day, and look, this is all we've done in three days. I keep setting up this table in different ways. <laughs> but you know what? I have to make time because I love doing this stuff. And I love showing you guys and teaching you guys a little bit of what I know, because you know, I don't know everything. I'm learning every day, like we are, like you guys are. So here we go. This here we go with another little tip. And this one is before you put the hay gasket, it's right here. We're gonna use an OEM head gasket. We need to clean this surface. Um, I like to use brake cleaner and just clean all this from any oil or debris. All this really, really good. We're gonna clean it with brake cleaner, and then we're gonna put the head gasket, and then we're gonna put the studs, the ARP studs. So, here we go. Let's see what happened. Got the studs, got it torqued. Now, don't forget about those two little guys in there. There's a lot of people that build these motors and they forgot there's two little bolts that go in there. They're E8. Make sure you got those two in there. Now we're gonna install the cam. Now I'm gonna spend a little more time teaching you guys how to do the cam the proper way. My cam. This is the way I do it. Let's get to it. First thing first, let's put um, some Lucas uh, engine assembly in here, all the way here. All this, uh, because remember, these motors don't have any bearings. In, in, they don't have any cam bearings. So it's just a bare aluminum here. So it's very important that you lubricate it, lubricate it really, really good. So when it does the dry start, when you first start it, there's plenty of lubricant in there so it doesn't damage your head. All right, so like I say, we have the cam. There's no bearing, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of this uh, Lucas, uh, engine assembly right in there. All right, and now we're gonna put it on the actual cam too. And now just a little tip. You know that once you have the cam in there, we're gonna lock it, right? We're gonna lock it. So here's the part that is, it, it, it needs to be like this. So mine as well. Right from the gecko, you put it just like that. Now, this is a head that never been 
overheat it. You see how nice it goes all the way inside? Now, if your head, for some reason, is being overheated, and when you put it on this last one, it's tough, it's okay. I mean, I seen this still works, but it's I would if it was my motor, I would replace it. So here we go. See how easy that was. So now we got the cam locked. Now we're gonna fish out the timing chain, just like so. And we're gonna put it right in the back of the cam, right like that. Now something important is if you're doing this in the engine, this sensor here needs to come out. So you put this one, this plastic piece on it just like that if these marks are not black just take just clean it up with brake cleaner get a black marker and just lightly put the marks on it it will help you to put the timing so once this the timing changes on the back is a lot easier all you have to do is just go like this hold it here Hold it here like that. And just like this. And then you can put your chain on it. You have to play with this. I mean, it's not easy. Sometimes it will fight you all the way there we go so obviously right now it's out of timing so what you do let me see you just go like this and you see how i walked it but i walked it the wrong way so you you don't have to take off the change anymore all you got to do is this and then it walks a little bit more see we almost there one more now we come over here and you press this one here you see that's the correct timing if you look at if you look at your head even like this this one you can barely see it right there and this one is up a little bit that's the correct timing that's factory timing right there so now next what we do is Actually, I forgot to put this guy in here. We gotta put this guy here. There we go. And now, we gotta drain the tensioner. You see how hard it is? That's as far as I can push it. So, how you do is you drain it. You take something not very pointy, just something just like this. Put it in there. And you push. You see how the oil came out? And then you push, and you see how it goes all the way inside? All right. Now, you see how it goes all the way in? You have to do this. You have to do it. So now we put a little bit of Lucas on this. And we put it put it in here now notice that I haven't put on my bolts we are using ARP bolts you can use a factory bolts we are using ARP bolts so we put a little red lock tie on it we install them all without tightening them that we can still do this number once they're all in there we can we can put the this guy in where the timing tension is and then you see how it moves it see and screw it in and then we can tighten these bolts but i will show you the whole process all right guys so i don't want to confuse you guys because i do everything like all over the place let's recap we have the cam in we have the cam gear in there is no bolts in there and you can still move it around so like i say you go like this it's on timing perfect now we're gonna put the bolts i did put red lactite 
um, you have to put at least at least blue. Um, I like red. Is is there's no issues because it's steel on steel. If it was steel on aluminum, then the red, ah, you know, I'll be a little like. But it's steel on steel, and these bolts are very very strong. And everybody and I always have used red, so I don't think it's a problem. We're gonna install these bolts in. We are we we're gonna put them in almost tight, but not tight. I still want this to move back and forth. All right, so as you guys can see, I got all the bolts in there. It's still loose. Got my tensioner in there. Now we're gonna put the plug. And I'll show you guys what that is going to do. All right, that's nice and tight. So now we come over here, and as you guys can see, it doesn't move anymore. See, even though the bolts are loose, so when you look at this, this is what you want to see. You want to have your head right here, looking at this level all the way through, and you see how the timing is. That is the factory setting right there. Don't have to be a rocket scientist or anything. Don't need no degree wheel, none of the stuff. Just like that, that will work. And that's the way I do my motors. I don't complicate myself. You don't have to that's what you got so now what we're gonna do is gonna tighten this bolt and pretty much we are done and like i say i don't put my pto cover because in case one of these bolts fall down in case this little guy that love to fall down falls down you can grab it see so once we're done with this i put my breather on and everything all the sensors and everything then i'll put my pto cover on I get a lot of questions how to install the catalyst cam. And I think this is a pretty good video so you guys see. Now, I will make a video on how to do it in the jet ski because it is a little different. And I got some little tricks that really help to not mess up when you're doing on the ski. Because obviously on the ski, you don't have all this access. You know, like I'm sitting right here and I'm looking at the, we don't have none of that. So I will be doing a video on that. For now, this is what you get. So I hope you guys learn a few things. So let's move on. All right, guys, so we got the rockers in. Now these are torqued to 14 pounds and 90 degree. It's very easy. You take, you take something, you know, a little bigger than this, and you can either put it like that, and 90 degree is right here. So very easy, so 14 pounds, 90 degree. I put my little washer there, put this guy in, put all the bolts on this sensor. So this is ready to go. I can literally right now just put my little plugs here and put in the valve cover. And now I can do this guy, the PTO cover, because I'm not working on the top of the motor anymore so now we can do the pto cover all right so we're ready to put the valve cover on now do not forget this guy i see many people forget this guy you know and the motor still works but man you eat up part of the head here and you're gonna eat up this guy here and if if the timing change i see some that just goes through it and it breaks this your block is not good or you have to weld it it's a big mess so what this does is it prevents the timing chain to go you see how it goes right there to touch any aluminum so that's what this one is here for on this side and then this one is here so do not forget this or you're gonna have a mess this is one thing that i man i keep telling you guys and keep telling you until you guys tell me don't tell me no more <laughs> the valve cover bolts you cannot over tight these bolts this is a self you don't have to put any self sealing you know you don't have to put any silicone nothing in here there's a rubber piece right there but what is unique about this bolt it has a stop so you go down on the thread until it stops if you keep going you're gonna mess up the thread. Because like all the bolts, if you keep pushing it in, 
they will dig more so they will go in more but this one does not so be careful just once you got it tied just do like a little touch and that's it and you will be okay uh, you don't have to deal with messed up threads and put inserts and all kind of stuff in it and then it complicate things so don't over tight these bolts and you're not gonna have issues it's done it's officially done got the oil the oil pump on got the exhaust on everything is on this is it now tomorrow we are putting the engine in that will be another video so i hope you guys enjoy building the engine with me i really hope i taught you guys a few things so you don't waste your money and remember to comment like and subscribe so we can grow this channel let's grow it so i can do more cool stuff instead of boring stuff like this a whole bunch of cool stuff but i'm waiting to get a little bit more subscribers and you guys are gonna get some crazy builds. So, till next time, I'll see you guys on the next episode.